we are pushing heavy on faith um, because it's so critical and it's necessary. Amen. And um, God wants to build us up in faith. So if you get tired of it, I'm sorry. We're not going. We're not going to stop until we help you get into what God has called us to. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter sixteen, verse number nine, reads as follows, and it says this: For the eyes of the Lord, come on screen, eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth, that He may strongly support those whose heart is completely His. You have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. We only focus on uh, the really first part of that, where it says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. Amen. That's our focus today. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that your loving kindness is everlasting and eternal. We give you all the praise today, and we thank you so much. We thank you so much. Glory to God. We thank you so much. We thank you so much that you will confirm today with miracles, signs, and wonders in Jesus' name and understanding. We give you praise. Amen. All right, let's go. Where my timer at? Where my timer at? Amen. Let me make sure to get these people so they can go to their games today. Praise God. All right, here's what we're talking about, radical faith. Now, here is the thing, family, and I really feel like preaching, and I want to get into this today, is that God has, for the church, tremendous opportunity. Um, I, I think we have to remember this, is that we are not in a um, gospel of limitation. We are not in the kingdom of limitation. We're not in the kingdom of struggle, but you are in a kingdom of massive opportunity. Come on, say, opportunity is all around me in Christ. Come on, say that again. Opportunity is all around me in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 kind of proves this to us. I want you to check this out. It says, It's blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And where are they located, church? In Christ. Come on, shout, in Christ. In Christ. Every spiritual blessing is located in Christ. Every spiritual blessing is located in Christ. And so there is tremendous massive opportunity surrounding you as a born again believer because why if you are in christ then that means that if i'm in christ and these blessings are in christ then that means that i'm surrounded by all this opportunity of possibility and it doesn't matter what your life situation is like it doesn't matter what your income level is your education level doesn't matter your marital status you could be single you could be married you could be divorced you could be widowed you could be a widower it does not matter with god because blessing and opportunity is all around us in christ and i really i'm gonna drive this into you until you wake up in the morning expecting that God's goodness is going to overtake you like the word of God says. I am going to make this a phrase so ad nauseum that you get sick of it, that God's goodness is coming for your life. Doesn't the Bible say in Psalm 23 that surely goodness and mercy, God's loving kindness is meant to follow you all the days of your life, that you are going to be tracked down you are going to be hunted. You are going to be guided and shepherded by the goodness of God. Why is it that in the church, Christians have more faith for negativity, for bad things, for the devil to wreak havoc in our lives than we do for the goodness of God to be flowing in our life? We quick to, to, to know that, oh man, if you don't do this, the devil will come. We quick to say, oh, the devil this, the devil that, the enemy this. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we expecting, let me tell you something. You, ex, you know how much faith we have in the devil and, and bad things that happen? We have a complete hope that this world is going to shambles. Am I lying to you? We know as believers that the world is growing darker, more and more evil is going to grow, wickedness is going to abound, right? And we got verses to say that. The Bible talks about in the end that times are going to go wicked. Jesus says, Matthew 24, that men and women are going to be lovers of themselves, and that even the very elect can be deceived. We know all this stuff. We know that the times, the sign of the times, the, 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 the challenges, cultural deprivation and perversion and destruction. But here is the thing. But God's goodness 
for his people and for his people in Christ never fall off. My God, you are not subscribed to the trajectory of the world. You are subscribed to the kingdom of God. And the Bible says his kingdom has no end. My God, his kingdom has no end. That means that his goodness has no end. His provision has no end. His power, his might, his healing has no end. I need you to shout it's no end to it. Oh, it ain't never going to stop. I know I probably can't say that, but it'll never stop. It'll never be over. It will never end. My God. But so many of us have more faith in the destruction and what the devil and culture is doing than what God says. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Everything that happens in the news, everything they tell you on Twitter, on X, everything that you see on your news feed, right? Everything you see in the newspapers, like, oh, this is going to happen. And then you begin to brace yourself and you align with the truth or the reality that the world is giving you. Instead of aligning with the truth and reality of the kingdom of God, I got to ask you, <laughs> I got to ask you the question, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report that says that by his stripes you are healed? Or will you believe the report that the doctors give you? And no shade to doctors, they're doing their job. We need doctors. We need good doctors. We need good kingdom doctors. But I'm telling you, will you believe God's report more than what you believe your, your medical report says? More than your credit report? More than your income statement? My God, man, you are in the kingdom of God and none of that stuff is relevant in the kingdom of God. The only thing that's relevant in the kingdom of God that is going to bring about change or lack thereof is your faith. And I want you to begin to see just and I've been harping on this. We had next level faith. And now we have radical faith, right? I want you to begin to think about just how much God has dictated believers to operate by faith. He says in Romans chapter one, verse number 17, here's what he says. He said this, and the just, the righteous man, come on, shall live by faith. That's the last portion. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. So the way, you're, the way that you're supposed to live as a believer is not as a black person, not as a Hispanic, not as a Caucasian, not as an American, not as a New Yorker, not as a Bronxite, not as a Harlemite, not as a Queensite, wherever you're from, not as that. But we're supposed to live by faith. And we identify and we solely recognize by faith. And this is the challenge of believers. This is the challenge of the church because we've developed a Christianity where we are not living by faith. We're living by a hope and a dream and a prayer. We're living a wing and a prayer. We're living by stuff that's not kingdom. And we wonder why we don't get results. We wonder why our lives don't look like it. We wonder why that why we have the results we get in life. I'm telling you this, that your results should look like what the Bible says. Mm. What does the Bible say? Oh, I'm glad you asked. You're going to hear a lot of this verse. Shout out to... Uh, my spiritual father, the great Bishop David Oyedipo. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, man. We tapping into that. Proverbs 4.18. But the path of the just of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. My God, that your life should never stop shining. Your grit, the goodness of God will never stop going in your life. Let me ask you a question. Does Oh my God, does what happens in the news dictate whether the sun still blazes at its rate that it does? Does the devil's activities, does it impact whether or not the moon shines every night? Absolutely not. Then why do you think that anything that God has spoken about you will be impacted by what happens in the world? I'm telling you, we have to get our mind shifted. 
our minds changed and challenged because we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we're of the world. And you think that just means because you don't dress the same way you used to dress or used to be wild before you got saved. But thank God you cooled down. I'm grateful for that. That you're not outside no more. I'm grateful for that. But you think you think being of the world means that you don't cuss no more like you used to. You think it means that you don't fight anymore like you used to. No, being of the world doesn't mean just that my behavior has changed or being uh, not of the world doesn't mean that my behavior is not changed, but it means that also that I don't deal with the same stuff they deal with. I don't get the same results they get. I don't have the same outcome in life they have. I don't have the same trajectory. Why? Because I'm living in the kingdom of God. I'm here in New York, but I'm not of New York. Yeah, you. I'm here in Harlem, but I'm not of Harlem. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Because why? Because I'm in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of God, you ought to expect kingdom results. Come on. I need you to shout. I'm having kingdom results. Come on. I'm having kingdom results. I will expect nothing less in my life, but kingdom results, kingdom results in my home, kingdom results in my health, Kingdom results in my money, kingdom results in my career, in my business, in my mind, in my peace, in my surroundings, in my destinies, nothing but kingdom results. Glory to God, man. And you have to be tuned to this and unshakable. You have to become rooted and grounded in this and nothing can stop you or take you away from it. Because if you begin to lean on your own understanding, if you begin to accept the wisdom and the knowledge of the world, then you will become contaminated and then your faith, which you're supposed to live by, will become stagnant and immobile. Come on, say, I've got to live by faith. I've got to live by faith. Living by faith doesn't mean that, oh, I go to church. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, I'm, I'm living by faith because I know God loves me. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. It's good to know that he loves you because he does. It's good to believe that Jesus died on the cross. for you. It's good to be a Christian, but that don't mean you're living by faith. It's good to change your behavior and your moral morality to line up with the word of God. Man, that is so good. You should do that. Scripture tells us to be holy because God is holy. But that doesn't mean you're living by faith. Watch this. Let me give you this. The children of Israel were trapped in Egypt, right, in bondage. For a period of time, 430 years, right? 430 years. And then God came and, did, and then delivered them out of Egypt, the Bible says, with a mighty hand. With a mighty hand. God delivered them. God pulled them out. God saved them. God brought them out, right? God said, no longer are you slaves. You're going to begin to live like the covenant king people that you are. The kings that you are. I'm delivering you out of slavery. Placing you into a place of dominion and rulership with God. All right. Now watch this, though. They were free from Egypt. Egypt is a symbol, a symbolic of it's, it's symbolic of sin, of the devil, of the world system. Right. So they were freed from that, heading to their promised land and their place of destiny. But watch this. They all didn't make it in. Why? Because many of them were freed, but not all of them live by faith. Just because I'm not in sin no more, just because I've been converted and saved from the domain of darkness and built, uh, brought into the kingdom of God's beloved son, doesn't mean that I'm automatically walking by faith. Hello, somebody. Meaning this, that you can be free, you can be a child of God, and that does not mean that you are walking by faith. Mm. Faith is a system of living. Faith is a fight. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 that we've got to fight the good fight of faith. Just because I'm born again and free from the world, free from the devil's uh, jurisdiction over my life, from his control over my life, doesn't mean I'm automatically walking in faith. And this is the distinction that we have to make. And somehow, especially here in America, 
we have made it seem like just because you save, therefore that means you're automatically walking by faith. Just because you don't do what you used to do, that means that you're walking by faith. And that's not the case. But we changing that because we jumping into radical faith. Radical faith. Jesus says the just shall live by faith. Everything God wants us to do. Every promise God has, it is by faith. You know, I was meditating this morning and the Lord shared something with me and I don't remember it, but I wrote it down so I didn't forget. <laughs> Here's what he says. He says, I'm not required to perform any promise that you do not first enable by faith. Mm, isn't that good? I said, say what? God says, I'm not required to perform any promise that you do not first enable by faith. I know this may mess up some of y'all's theology because you just want God to just feed you grapes <laughs> and you lean on a hammock just chilling. But no, he says you've got to first activate by faith. You saying, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate, right? We got all these gimmicks and all this stuff. It sounds good. You know, it, it works for a meme. It works to get views and clicks on Instagram and YouTube, but it don't it don't work for clicks with God. And it doesn't it doesn't resonate because he's here. <laughs> he says, I was here before you. He says, I'm trying to get you to activate. <laughs> Come on. Born again believer, activate. That's what the Holy Spirit's saying right back to you while he's pop locking. Ah, ah, e, e, ah, 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 you know. <laughs> Child of God, activate. That's what he's thinking. Where is your faith? <laughs> Isn't it true that the Bible says Jesus could do no miracles in many places because of their unbelief? You don't have to activate God. You don't have to activate any promises. What you have to activate is the thing that will unlock them. And it is not your need that will unlock them. It is not your tears that will unlock them. It is not your desperation that will unlock them. It is not where you live that will unlock them. It is not your status or your state. But what will unlock the promises of God is only my faith. My God. Not even the fact that you got saved will unlock the promises of God in your life. It gives you access to them because you can't have access to the salvation benefits of God apart from being saved, apart from having faith in Christ. But just having that alone does not automatically activate all the precious promises of God. Mm. How do you get it? Do you got to earn it? Nope. Do you got to work for it? Nope. In terms of I got to I got to, you know, make sure that I'm presenting myself and be holy a certain way so I can walk in it. No. So I can earn it. So I can merit it. No. You get it by grace. But you have to enable it by faith. Hallelujah. Are we together? I feel like Michael Jackson. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? I want to know, is the church okay? Because I'm not trying to diminish you. I'm trying to help push you. I'm trying to help us see that maybe we've not been living the kingdom lives that we've been called to. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm trying to help us see a higher calling. Your church attendance will not enable the promise. You hearing the word will not enable the promise. Come on. But what do you have to be? You have to be a doer of the word, says James chapter 2. The Bible says that man is blessed who's not a hearer only, but a doer of the word. Amen. So you've got to do it. So you got to enable it by faith. Thank you, Jesus. So we're in a season where you have to commit to I'm going to live by faith. 
Listen, the world is going to be challenging. Life is going to be hard. There are things that are going to occur that are going to bring disturbance in life. And that's a real thing. Like, we can't avoid that. But if we are going to experience kingdom exemption, then we need to make sure that we are living by faith. What do I mean by kingdom exemption? I mean that we don't experience the same outcome and results that people in the world do. That I've got to live by faith. I've got to, I've got to stay in faith because if I don't, then I'm going to be committed to the same results that they get. The same life that unbelievers have. The same things that they are subjected to. They're subject to inflation. They're subjected to uh, 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 shortages. They're subjected to lack, but not in the kingdom of God. Come on. There is no lack in God. <laughs> Come on. The more money goes up, the more inflation goes up. God says, I'll just give you more. But you can't get that if you don't live by faith. I, I can hear the doubt and cynicism. Yeah, okay. He's saying that. No, I'm telling you the word of God. <laughs> Jesus says the gold is mine, the silver is mine. All the cattle on a thousand hill is mine. The whole earth and everything in it belongs to me. But not even that. The Bible says if, he, if God can't trust us with, uh, with the, the natural riches, how can he trust us with true riches? Oh, God's got a source. Philippians 4.19, and my God will supply all your needs. How? Where does it come from? From your job? Does it come from your retirement? Does it come from your investments? No, the Bible says he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Come on. God's got a stash that can't go out. God's got a stash that won't run out. You ought to say amen to that. He supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. This means that my source, come on, becomes God. All right, let's jump to the scripture. I'm done with my intro. So here's the thing. So it is foolish in the kingdom of God to depend upon other things or people as the source for your victory and breakthrough. It's foolish. You want to be a dummy in the spirit? I just wish you would just, if you could, if you, I'm a little bit old school, I'm not quite, I wasn't there. They were showing it on reruns and, you know, syndicated TV, but, but, you know, I, I feel a, a Fred G. Sanford, the late Red Fox, you know, would tell you big dummy, you big dummy. <laughs> you want to be a kingdom dummy? Don't be a kingdom dummy. I just wish you would tell somebody in the comments. Just put lovingly in the comments. Don't be a dummy. Don't be a dummy. And yeah, we're not seeing this negative. We're not calling you dumb. We're saying don't be a dummy. How do you be a kingdom dummy? How do you be a dummy in this in a dummy in Christ? <laughs> oh, I just thought of something that's so funny that I cannot say because y'all will not have me as your pastor. Another moment if I say what I'm thinking. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> Where was I? How to not be a dummy. Well, what makes you a dummy is to think that is to depend upon other things or people as the source for your victory or breakthrough or for whatever outcome that God has in your life. See, God doesn't depend on anybody or anything to get to you what he has promised. When God has made a promise, when we see his promises in scripture, where it says, I will provide for you. Matthew 6, tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And what's going to happen? And everything you need will be added to you. Is that not what the Bible says? Well, guess what? Do you think God is depending upon the great government of the United States to determine whether or not everything that he's promised gets to you. Do you think he's depending on your job, which is here today and gone tomorrow, <laughs> to determine whether or not he's going to get to you what he's promised? 
Do you think with your beautiful sanctified mind that God is dependent on your child's father and or mother to get to you what he has promised for your life? Come on, don't play me. Don't play me. He's not. He's not depending on it. He doesn't need it. Because why? Whatever promise he has promised you, he says, by my own self, I'll do it. I will confirm my word. I will bring about his promises in your life. And you don't have to depend on anything because your source and your trust should be in me. Oh, yeah. Psalm chapter 121, verse 1 through 3 says it like this. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to slip. He who keeps me will neither slumber. Let me read it for you verbatim. I kind of remixed it there. It's really the words, but I kind of made it personalized. Here's what it says. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. For where shall my help come? That's the question. Where's my help coming from? Where's my help coming from, God? He says, your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Man, your help comes from God. Your source is the Lord. Your only source is the Lord. It's not how it's not how many people show up to the meeting. It's not how much they raise in the offering. It's not who likes you and who doesn't. It's not what your your biblical spiritual convictions are. I don't need the world to like me. I just need God to like me. I need God to pay attention to me. Because he is my source. And what you've got to get beyond just saying, oh, yes, he's my source. No, you need to get this into your heart. It's got to be deep down in your spirit, in your knower, that is sure enough as it is right now, as I'm living, God is my source. As much as I'm sitting on what I'm sitting on, I believe even more that God is my source for all things. And he's not running out. God is my source. God is your source. God is your source. See, this is how we exempt ourselves from the world and from the world system. Oh, yeah. See, you want to be a Christian for real? Then that means that you got to get on the source. You got to get with the source. Jesus is the source. All right. Praise God, man. Are you feeling me or not? I think um, <laughs> another verse says, fine, cost you nothing. Pay me no mind. Jesus is my source. And when you begin to live by faith, it is a life that recognizes that my source is not stuff. I'm not going to make my source the resources. You see, God can use anything. God can get water out of a rock. You say, all I got is rocks in my life. Well, God says, I don't need a river. Just strike the rock and water will come out of the rock. What world, what universe can a river that can feed three million people <laughs> come out of a rock? Oh, the world where you live by faith in the kingdom of God. This is what happens in the kingdom of God. How can God bless you? How can God make sure that you get exactly what he's promised you? How can you survive and thrive? It's going to be because you live by faith. And you recognize God is your source. I'm coming in here and I'm going to insert a giving mantra. I'm sorry, y'all. Don't be mad at me. But let's talk about this in giving because this is why we can be free to give. Why we can be free to give the tithe and the offering to God. Because we recognize that he's our source. Now, how much money is in my bank account? See, until you can get free from that restriction, it's hard to say God is your source. Again, <laughs> why am I saying this? Because I want you to live so blessed. I want you to live so free in God that you don't that you can rise higher and higher. Man, we have the cheat code in Christ. I really hope you understand that. 
In the kingdom of God, we have the, 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 the eternal heavenly cheat code. But what is the one thing that says, okay, he's not my source. My heart to honoring God with tithe and sow and seed. Oh, God knows I would, but I ain't got it. God knows I would, but I got to pay for this. I got to pay for that. I got this and I got that. And I hear you because natural wisdom says, yeah, don't. Yeah, if all you got is this. Then you shouldn't give God this seed because this is all you have. What am I saying? This is all I have. Listen to the words because this is all you have. This is all you have. This is what you're telling yourself. Oh, I would give, but this is all I have. I trust God, but this is all I have. I believe God can do it, but this is all I have. Do you do you get it yet? Or do I do, do you get the punchline? Come on, help me preach. Do what all you have when you say that and you think that and you act like that you are then determining and declaring that god is not your source but all you have is what's in your account I, listen <laughs> ain't nobody taking your money here all right matter of fact i don't even care if you go to this church i want you to come here you could go to another church i don't care Give them your money. Give them your time. I'm telling you that if you want to live by faith, then you cannot have the mindset that all you have is what you have. You can't look at your bank account and say, this is all I have. You can't look at the resources in your house and say, this is all I have. Because that is not all you have. Because God is your source. But if you lean on that understanding, you're going to get those results. You got to get radical with it and say, nope, that's not all I have. My God, come on, come on. I got God. <laughs> uh, uh, this is God plus this. You got God plus whatever you got left in your account. You got God and his resources and his possibilities and his unlimited nature and his indefinable uh, greatness and his inscrutable understanding and his all power and his all knowledge i got that and whatever i got left in my bank account and whatever's in my house and whatever connections and networks i have if you take that all away i still got way more than what i had but you got to get this in your mind that god is my source See, how do you know this? Because we've got to get to a place where, and I'm telling you this, because it's a check. How free are you to give? Well, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to, how I'm going to pay this, how I'm going to do this, because uh, this is all I got. I mean, you know, God is my source. I'm sorry. Pastor said, don't say that's all I got. God is, this is, this is. Oh, man, it's a test. Isn't that how God tested Abraham? God said to Abraham, listen, I know you. I, listen, you've been dope these 24 years or these. What is it? How was it now? This is probably like 30 some years now. These 30 years, you've been great. You've been a great audience, Abraham. <laughs> he says, well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your son, Isaac, your only son whom you love. And I want you to offer him as a sacrifice, a.k.a. I want you to kill him for me. And Abraham was like, cool. Say less. Didn't even think about it. Went into action immediately because he recognized that God would raise Isaac up. Because if God can give it to me, God can bring it right back to me. <laughs> Hello. And then after he was about to do it, God said, he said, don't kill him. I was just testing you. He says, now I know that you fear me in everything. That there's nothing you will withhold from me. And because of that, I will give you, man, I'm going to bless you, blessing you. Man, you thought I was going to bless you before, which I promised to do. Man, wait till you get a load of this. He said it in his Jack Nicholas or Nicholson bat, a joker voice. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> and this, I'm telling you this because why? It's about where's your source? 
It's hard. Maybe. But when you break through on that level, watch this. This is what it means when the Bible says the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the whole earth. Seeking to show himself strong or strong support for those whose heart is completely his. Let me help you out. You cannot have any other source but God in the kingdom. What's going to happen is you will live a contaminated, sabotaged, poisoned life as a believer. If anything else becomes your source. I know you got money. Uh, I know I know you got it going on. But if you make anything other than your source, you will you will find out in the day of trouble. Those things will be touched. And they will go down and you won't get them back because why? Because it's not built up and established by God. It's by your knowledge. It's by your wisdom. It's by your smarts, by yoga list, which is great. Do that. But if you want to secure what you have. So that no matter what comes, no matter what hell is presented in your life, it won't impact you. You got to make sure that God is your source. Hallelujah. Because why? when you live like this, you will indeed get God's attention. Because God is looking for people who recognize him as their source. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. This is not a message about giving. This is a message about where your heart is. This is a message about if my heart is fully God's, this means that I have no other source but God. Jesus hanging on the cross when they were mocking him. He said, listen, y'all crazy. I, could, I literally could call down six legion of angels and have them all whoop y'all butts. I just want y'all to know that. Like, you, you think this, me being naked, abused, brutalized means that this is all I got? <laughs> he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Ooh. Watch this. My healing is not of this world. No, no, I may use some resources in the world, but my healing is not of this world. How you know? You know, nobody get healed of this. You know, people have this kind of disease all their life. Once they get it, they're going to die with it. People die from this. Nope. I'm sorry. My kingdom is not of this world. I want you just to declare that with me. Say, my kingdom is not of this world. Yeah. You know, marriage is going to be hard. Oh, child, I'm telling you, it's hard. Marriage is hard. Come on, you got to say, my marriage is not of this world. Y'all can have a hard time. Y'all can be arguing and bickering back and forth, sleeping on the couch, throwing irons at people. That's fine. But my marriage is not of this world. You know, you can't you can't date nobody these days. You you can't you can't. It's hard to find somebody. No, my my love life. Is not of this world. Remember, I'm living by faith. Everything about me has got to be by faith. Not of this world, meaning this, that my results are not based on what y'all seeing. And I say y'all meaning the world. Do, do you understand what I'm telling you right now? Do you see how that your life cannot be measured up with how the world does? That if I want kingdom results, I've got to make sure that my heart is fully convinced that God is my source, that my heart is fully his. My marriage is not of this world. My life, my love life is not of this world for you singles. Come on, my parenting is not of this world. You, you, you don't, you don't <laughs> got to send your kids to the hospital every time you get done disciplining them. My God. But then again, also, the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. So I'm not saying to 
abuse your child. The Bible says don't um, uh, uh, parents don't fathers particularly don't push your kids to the point of, you know, forget the term right now, but um, to where they hate you and to, you know, darn near abuse. Don't do that. We're not doing that. We're not advocating abuse. But we also aren't advocating not disciplining our children. Like, you know, kids, they're going to be kids. No, nah, no, nah, my children are not of this world. And see, this is the thing that I'm having to believe because, you know, my baby boy, shout out to my, my, my weekly monk story. You know, I got to throw in my baby boy, whom I love dearly. We're getting to that age where, you know, he's making decisions and just like nervous because I'm like, man, this is my kid, man. It's like, I don't want my kid to be, you know, out there you know, influences and he's impressionable. And, you know, we just want the best for our children. And it's like, man, how do I, Lord, I'm just, and I tell my sister all the time, like, you know, I'm worried. I don't want him to be, you know, out here doing drugs, selling drugs, sleeping around with women, sleeping around with men. I don't want him to do none of that. I want my kid to walk in the beauty of holiness. And it's just like, Lord, what can I do? Well, you sow the seeds of faith. Because why? Your parenting is not of this world. My parenting is not of this world. Co-parenting, not of this world. That God is going to give you out of this world results. Mm -mm -mm. Here's why you need to walk in radical faith. Because what God is about to do in your life is going to be out of this world. <laughs> When they see, come on, when they see you walking in what you walking in this month, you're going to be like, man, that's crazy. No, you're going to no, say, don't say it's crazy. It's out of this world. <laughs> ooh, -wee. ooh, wee. When you see how good, how good looking my wife is, you're going to be like, oh, we, she fire said, no, she out of this world. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. Come on, when, 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 when we see what you walking in, what you driving in, what you pulling up in, in 2024, come on, when we come into Harlem, we're going to say, ooh, look at what God did. God did that. Ooh, you're like, ooh, it's good. You're like, no, it's out of this world. <laughs> come on, man, when they see your children's results, come on, you're going to say it's because, no, not because I'm great, but it's because it's out of this world world my kingdom it's not of this world hallelujah oh man you got a good doctor how you get healed from that no my my recovery god bless doctor so and so but it's because my recovery is out of this world they don't have nothing to do <laughs> have nothing to do with these doctors listen i could have had uh, a kindergartner operate on me but because God promised me healing and it's by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, I'm telling you that my recovery is out of this world. Man, if I was, if I was preachy preachy today, which I kind of want to do, but I can't do it, I would tell you to touch your neighbor and say neighbor, oh neighbor. Oh. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, say it's finna be out of this world. Yeah, what you're coming into. All right, let me stop. I don't want to play because I'm actually start preaching and grandmother Mike, Come on, it's going to be out of this world. It's going to be out of this world. My God, how you feel under an anointing like that? Oh, it's out of this world. <laughs> Glory to God, because I've committed to living by faith, knowing that God is my source, knowing that God is the strength of my life. It's going to be out of this world. Praise God. I think I'll stop there. Hallelujah. Watch this. When your heart is completely God's, that is how you get God's attention. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, is that you, we have to get God's attention. And as believers, we get God's attention when our heart is fully his. Mm, I might. I might do it. I might. I might. I might do it. Oh. I might do it. I might find my key. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. 
Look at your neighbor sing name. It's going to be out of this world. Ooh. All right, let me stop because I'm a... I don't have no organs, so I can't do it. You know, it don't sound right. I'm not that great of a singer either. It's going to be out of this world. <laughs> yeah. My God, 2024, your results going to be out of this world. Because now that you're out, your heart is completely God's. You recognize that his, he's your source and solely your source. Glory to God. That God is going... Oh, don't push me, Pastor Simone. Glory to God. That, that, that God's attention will be brought to me God's attention will be isolated drawn to me and he is going to begin to bring strong support do you know let me let me give you this thank God for revelation <laughs> thank God for revelation she says it's the key that's hilarious yeah I'm gonna see sharper Mm. <laughs> I would close by telling you this. If I had an organ, I would so do it. I need hoop triggers. But check this out. Let me tell you what it looks like for your source to be completely God, your heart to be fully his. Let me give you two things about Jesus. Number one, he was fully God and fully man, right? Ooh. <laughs> I would have preached that. I shouldn't have started that. Fully God, meaning this, that he is the creator of all things. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word was with God. It means the word, the word was God. The word was with God. All things were made through him. Apart from him, nothing was created that was created. Jesus, the word. All things came into existence through him. He is the glory of God. Jesus. The word made flesh. Jesus is all powerful. Jesus, there's a part of him that is God, literally. The logos walking in human form. And then there's a part of him that is the human part, the frail part, that's dust like us. So we have this conglomeration, this mixture of the divine and the damaged. King and corrupt flesh. Of course, Jesus was without sin, so he wasn't corrupt in that sense, but we die. We, we fade away. Our bodies wither and we go back to the dust. From, from the dust we came, from the dust we'll return. So Jesus is God in the flesh, all power, all authority, all wisdom, all might, all grace, all goodness, while at the same time, all human. It's like the best of both worlds, right? However, we see on the cross, Jesus is experiencing and showing something that is so powerful. Here it is, God himself in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, the Son of God, hanging on the cross for our sins, your sins, for my sins. He's hanging on the cross, and his body is bruised, beaten, destroyed, damaged. The Bible says his face was so marred, it was unrecognizable, bloody to a pulp inflamed probably had black eyes probably had swollen jaws i mean blood just gushing from his head off of his body his back was whipped worse than probably what we saw uh from the movie roots with kunta kente i mean skin coming off i mean they got him and they wouldn't stop Nails in his hands. I mean, these nails were probably easily six to eight inches long. Easily. Boom. Both hands and his legs. He's hanging on a cross. Can't breathe. Asphyxiated. Trying to catch his breath. Here is our Savior, God in the flesh, dying a most brutal death. Innocently. Yet he has the ability within himself to come down off the cross. He's on the cross, suffering. The wrath of God is upon him. But he's still God. I love the James Cleveland song that says he could have come 
down from the cross. But he didn't. He decided <laughs> to die just to save me. He could have come down. Why? Because he's God in the flesh. He, he could have made it so that those nails that were driven deep into his hands, deep into the wood, came out automatically. He could have made that happen. Yeah, he could have did that. He could have made it so that the nails in his hands came out, the, the nails in his feet came out, that, that the crown of thorns that they pressed into his skull could have just lifted up. He would have been floating in midair. He could have made it that as he was floating in midair, that all of his wounds began to heal himself. And he began to become recognizable. And the flesh that was lost could have just came back on himself. But he didn't. Why didn't he do that? Because he was giving us an example of what it looks like when your source is God and not yourself. He stayed on the cross, humiliated, naked. <laughs> because he wanted to show us what gets God's attention. I'm not saying you got to be beat down. I'm not saying you got to be whipped. But what I'm saying is, is that when you empty yourself of all possibility in your own self and you say, you know what? My help is only God. Jehovah is my help. God is my source. I'm surrendering. I'm submitting myself to what God has said. And if he doesn't do it, then I'm going to just be out here. That's, that's what it means. That's, that's what gets God's attention. That's what radical faith requires in this season. To know that my source, even Jesus said, my source is God. <laughs> my source is what God says, the Father says. And I'm asking you, what's your source today? I'm asking you, what's your source today? Mm. What's your source? Because God, the eyes of the Lord, the Bible says, are roaming to and fro throughout the earth to strongly support those whose heart I fully is. God saw Jesus and I, I support that. Because he was submitted to God's will. And he says, ooh, I'm not even counting my own power. I'm not even counting my own ability. I could call legions of angels right now to whip everybody. I'm not even counting on that. I'm asking you today, where's your source? Where's your source? Because that's what's going to get God's attention. You want radical results? You want out of this world results? Show me radical faith. When all hell is online. All hell is breaking loose in my life, rather. And my life is on the line. Because of faith. Some of us are getting situations where hell is on the loose because you open the door and say, come on in here, y'all. Come on in here. Some of us let hell into our lives. And then we want God save me. I'm not talking about that situation. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about you're in a bind because you're trusting God. Because you follow God's word. Because you gave and you tithe according to what God asked you to do. Because you've been living a wholesome and clean life, according to scriptures. Because you've been committing yourself to the word of God. 
because you've trusted God above man. That's what I'm talking about. And when you get like that and you have no hope, God says, oh, I see you. I see you. Can I encourage somebody today? The Lord sees you. Jesus. Yes, Lord. The Lord sees you. The Lord will see 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 you. Come on, we're going to pray. My God, and I'm going to play this song as we pray. My God, I want you to hear this today. We sing it all the time, but I want you to hear it from a different place today. I want you to hear it from a different place today. My God, come on, where we say that Lord is the strength of my life. Come on. Come on. Come on, lift your hands to God right wherever you are. Come on and declare, Lord, I give you everything today. My life is yours today. My heart is fully surrendered to you. And I'm lifting my eyes to the hills. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because I know that my help, it comes from you. My help comes from you. My help this month is coming from you. It's not coming from my job, it's coming from you. It's not coming from my friends, it's coming from you, God. My God, as I live in faith, God, my help is coming from you. As I operate by faith, it's not coming from my family, it's coming from you. It's not coming from a plug, it's coming from you. And you're gonna give me instruction. You're gonna give me insight. Come on, you're gonna send angels to minister to me. You're going to provide out of this world results. You'll use a rock to get your will through in my life. You'll use a fool. You'll use my enemies to bring your will into my life. And we bless you. I bless you today, God, because you are the source of my strength. Come on, declare it this morning. Come on, tell the Lord, you are the source of my strength. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell him this morning. Whoa. Come on, you are the strength of my life, say. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, anybody believing that he's your strength today? Anybody declaring, God, that everything about you is going to be dependent on God? That I have no salvation but Jehovah. I have no help but God. And I lift my hands in total praise to you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let this be real. Let this be real this month. Let this be real this month. Let this be real this month. Let it not be just a, a church phrase, but let it be real this month. Somebody says, I'm going to the limit this month. I'm putting everything on the line. I'm putting everything on the line. According to his word, by faith, I'm putting everything on the line. Glory to God. God's going to see you. You're going to get God's attention. God's going to point you out and single you out for out of this world results. Out of this world outcomes in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. From you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you're watching today and you are not absolutely positively 100% sure that you are born again that you are saved meaning that if you were to die right now that you would be in heaven with God in favor and live eternally with God if you're not a hundred percent sure about that right now come on what I need you to do right now is to repeat this prayer after me you need to get saved today because the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that God has your life you need to get saved. The only way to do that is to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If that's you today, I want you to stand up on your feet wherever you are. Get out your bed, get out your seat, maybe on the train. Stand up on the train. I don't care. This is eternal we're talking about here. We're talking about the most important foundational thing you're going to do. My God, come on, lift your hand, the right hand to the air. Right hand in the air and say this, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I give you my life today. I receive you as my Lord, as my Savior. I declare that you are God in the flesh. You are the Son of God. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. 
and that you rose from the dead with all authority and power. I surrender my life to you. I repent of my sins today. Everything about me is yours. I receive you in Jesus' name. Thank you for washing me with your blood. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for making me whole. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer right now, I got good news for you. I'm going to welcome you into the kingdom of God. I'm going to welcome you into the platform where everything now becomes possible for you. Glory to God. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to do me a favor. Scan this QR code right now. Scan the QR code or text the word Jesus to the number 929-209-2377. Text the QR code and follow the prompt or you can scan the word Jesus to hashtag 929-209-2377. My God, you need to do this right now because we want to help you get established, help you get founded in the faith. My God, because you need to get help so that the devil can't steal what God done has done in your life today. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do that right now. Do that right now. Amen. Listen, if you don't have a church home, you need a church home. Maybe you've been uh, uh, wandering and you've been kind of out distant from the fellowship of God. You need to get joined. You need to get back connected to the house of God, to the people of God. Listen, I want you to join our church. Come on, join this church. We your crew, we your tribe. My God, come on, we'll be there for you. Amen. You need to be planted. If you don't have a planting, I'm not talking about just, oh, I watch this, Pastor. What? No, no, you need to be planted. You need a church where you can grow, you can thrive, you can be connected, you can experience the life of the kingdom. I want you to scan the QR code too. It's a different one. I want you to scan this one and or follow the prompts. And then text the word church to 929-209-2377. We'd love to have you be a part of our fellowship here at Next Level Church. My God. Listen, God is doing some amazing things. We're so thrilled and so excited. Man, I love the Lord. Come on, does anybody know he's the source of your strength? Does anybody believe that he's the strength of your life? My God. I'm telling you, I believe it. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. My God, and everything is going to change. I'm declaring this to you, that when you adopt this mindset, come on, everything is going to shift for you. Everything is going to shift for you because God's attention will be on you. This is going to be a month where God's got your, you've got God's attention. Matter of fact, every day of your life can be like that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you were blessed today. I am believing by faith you were blessed today. You were empowered. You were inspired. You were encouraged that God spoke something to you that would be beneficial to you today. May God, and listen, if you didn't get a chance to give or to sow, or maybe you want to sow, you know, you're led to sow. Listen, the information is on the bottom of the screen where you can do that. Of course, we've got a QR code for you to give. If you want to sow a seed, maybe God is leading you to sow a seed, a faith seed. Do that. Follow the, uh, the voice of God. Amen. Do that. Do that. Do that. May God, because God will always show up in your life. Whew. I'm not going to re-preach. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. Man, we're so grateful for you. We're so grateful for you. Listen, I'm glad that you were here today to be a part of service. Listen, I want to invite you to make sure I want to invite you to our after party. We kind of hang out a little bit on Zoom after church on Sundays, and uh, we talk and discuss about uh, the word and on what's going on in our lives. And so I want you to come and be a part of that. I want you to join us. Uh, we're on right now. Matter of fact, we got some people on there right now that are uh, awaiting your lovely smile and your lovely face. You don't gotta show your video, but come on, say what you got out of today. Say what your biggest takeaway is or takeaways and come and share, amen. This is important that we do this. It's one of the ways that we embrace in kingdom community and covenant life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let me give you our benediction. Come on, just lift your hand to the Lord. Come on and just repeat after me. Say, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now may the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Ghost Rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth now 
and forevermore. May the joy of God be upon you. May divine wisdom, may your ear be open to hear the instructions of the Lord as you move and operate by faith, as you live a completely sold out life, surrendered life. May the Lord unleash it for you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I bless you in the name of Jesus.